Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. Well, in today's episode, we're going to be building my newest kit called Smith's Lock and Key. The kit is currently available on my website at jasonjensentrains.com. So you can go to the website, purchase the kit. When you receive the kit, you can then watch the video and build it along with me. Now, if you're a Patreon member, you receive a $9 discount. And the discount code can be found on my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Jason Jensen Trains. All right, well, we have a lot to do, so let's get to it. Okay, the first thing I did was I cut out all of the walls. And I want to show you that this wall here has a lot of little walls or pieces within it that get used. Okay, next we're gonna brace the back of these. And for these walls, um, we're going to run the bracing, and I'll show you when it's on there, but it'll run the full length on the back to connect the two pieces. Okay, the walls are all braced. Uh, let me go over them quick with you. Um, let's see, this one here, this is the front. The bracing goes all the way to the edge, and then one piece down the center. Um, this wall here, all the way to the edge. Even here, all the way to the edge. Um, this little one, all the way to the edge and then one in the center. Now this is the back wall and it's very important that the side that has the little angle cut, you come in an eighth of an inch, the thickness of the bracing. And then on the other side, you go all the way to the edge and then one down the center. Very important that you uh, put that piece in an eighth. Okay, these two are the same. You'll come in an eighth of an inch on the side here and up here and on this side. And I just glued that piece to the top. Um, I used Elmer's glue and then I just put a dab of super glue um, on each end just to hold it there while it completely dries. Same on this one. Okay, now we'll go ahead and... Oh, I forgot. This one here. Come in an eighth of an inch on this side. So on the shorter side, not the tall side, on the short side, come in an eighth of an inch. And then same on this one. On the shorter side, come in an eighth of an inch. And then don't worry about this one. I'll show you later what that's for. Uh, it's really just for uh, the roof support. And then we have these little uh, triangle pieces. And those don't need to be braced either. Next, we're going to add some nail holes. And you may want to measure it out 
ahead of time and mark it with a pencil where you want them. And let's see, we'll go 7 sixteenths. You go 7 sixteenths or uh, maybe a half inch in between. And very important when you're doing this to take a piece of the bracing, something that's an eighth of an inch thick, and put it under it for support so that you don't break the wall. And we're only going to do the clapboard, not the scribed siding. Again, move your bracing under exactly where you're going. Okay, on the bottom section, we're putting the nail holes going this direction. Now be very careful when doing this because um, you should have a lot of support under there so that you don't break the walls. So let me grab another, I'll grab two. Let's try this again. And again, you don't have to press hard. Um, these I'm doing a half inch. Just use caution if you do this so that you don't break the walls. Okay, now if you want, you can Take your blade and lift some of the boards. Again, be very careful, make sure you have support under it. So take a piece of bracing that supports the wall so that if there's nothing under it and you're pressing, it doesn't snap your wall. Next, we're gonna stain the walls and we're gonna start with murky brown. And it's from besttrains.com. Here's the website right there. Then, after we get that on, we're going to go over it with shadow gray. And you can see I'm not going heavy. Just doing a thin coat.
Okay, our walls are dry. Now, let's go over it with the shadow gray. And it doesn't have to be even. You can do it very splotchy. Just make sure that you go in the um, same direction as the clapboard. Now, let's go ahead and take all of the strip wood that's in the kit and stain that. I'm just going to use the uh, shadow gray. Okay, let's start painting our walls. Now, I was going to do this two-toned, and I was going to use light buttermilk, uh, which is an off-white for the clapboard. And then a color called Thicket for the bottom in the corner trim and windows. And you can do that. It's a great, uh, it's a great combination. I'm going to do something a little different on this one. I'm going to use light blue. It's really light. I mean, it's almost a white. Again, the light buttermilk would work fine on this. Uh, I just want to try something different. Now you've seen me do this technique before where I just lightly drag my brush. Okay, now we're only going to use this color on the clapboard. And then all of the boards that are scribed that run up and down will be thicket. Okay, the light color is all done. Now we'll move on to thicket. Okay, now I'm taking the shadow gray and with a very thin brush going up some of those lines, starting at the bottom and going up. I have this wall done and I even went over the nail holes just on the bottom section. Uh, I suppose if you wanted to, you could. Go over the nail holes up here too. Very thin brush. Just go very light. This takes a little bit of time. It's definitely a, a step that you would not have to do, but on a medium sized kit, uh, it's kind of between small and medium. Um, you can do extra stuff like this. do a little bit of experimenting to learn some new techniques. So again, start at the bottom. Just kind of feather it up. Oh, I wanted to point out on this wall, um, this gets put in front of it but it's raised out so you don't need to paint behind 
this area. So just go ahead and put that in the corner and then use that as a guide. So you can see this section down here. I only need to paint the end um, and I left that unpainted because that all gets covered. Okay, the walls are all done. So now take a file and go over your edges. Now I did take my big file and just go over those walls on the edge so that it's nice and smooth. Just in case that they didn't line up quite perfectly uh, when you put them together. Just take the file and smooth it out. Just be gentle, be careful when you're handling the walls so that you um, don't break them. Okay, now I'm gonna do things a little out of order uh, because I don't have, I don't have the windows cut yet. So I'm going, because typically I would put in all of the windows. I would prime them, paint them, glue them in, glue the acetate in, do all of that. But we're just going to um, assemble the walls right now. Okay, so these go just like that. So we'll glue these two together. And let's use our one, two, three block. We'll make sure that everything's nice and square. Now, I don't know if you saw how I put that in, but I could take it and put it right up against it and then slide it down. That prevents glue from oozing out in that little corner. So again, we'll put that right up against the bracing and then slide it forward. That way all the extra glue oozes out on the inside towards the back and not in the front on that corner. So make sure that's perfectly square. Then we'll take this and glue it on the front. Now you'll see the back wall, that corner lines up, but this has an overhang. And that's how it's supposed to be. That gets glued like that. And then this one gets glued right there. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is get this glued in place. So make sure that the bottom lines up. It's perfectly flush with that. We're just turning it. So I glued that wall on and next I'm going to take this back wall with the 
slant and I'm going to glue it right there and we'll use our one two three block to make sure it's square Okay, we'll let this dry and then we'll glue it to this. Okay. Here's what our structure looks like so far. You can see we have all the corner trim glued on. I glued on these little angled pieces right here on both sides. Okay, now let's spray a primer on this sheet that has all of our doors and windows. And then after our primer is dry, we'll brush on some iced coffee to give it um, some wood grain to make it look like wood. Um, and then we're going to sponge on Thicket. So after I put the gray primer on everything, um, I sponged Thicket over all of the windows um, I'll show you the any the only thing that's reddish brown is the big door these two small doors and this door okay now I'm gluing on the window frames onto the front and after you get those glued in place and they're dry you need to paint the inside of the window frame it sounds like a lot of work but it actually doesn't take that long so the trick is to start from the back and pull forward and if there's a little bit of a a gap or you can see the edge of the clapboard this fills that in okay don't know if you'll be able to see that so the inside of the windows are now the bluish color I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all of the windows and then we'll glue acetate to the back of our windows and pop those in. Now, again, I'm doing things out of order. Before you assemble the structure like this, while the walls are flat, you should glue this in place. But um, I did not have everything um, completely designed and cut for the windows. Real quick, before I glue the window frames on, I just quick run my brush over the edge. I know, a lot of steps, <laughs> but uh, it pays off in the end. And one more thing, there's a, a top and a bottom to these window frames. On the top, it sticks out on both sides just a little bit try to show it to you I have it almost completely closed so just a little bit of glue comes out then I just sort of dab it with my finger smear it around a little bit make sure it's straight and lined up and once you have it exactly where you want it, just press it on. Okay, now we'll go back to this side and paint the inside of the window frame. 
Okay, the window frames are all on and I painted the inside. Even on these here. So it didn't take too long. I just glued on all the window frames and then brushed the inside of all of them. Now, before we glue in our windows, I'm going to take iced coffee. We'll make this quick. Um, neutral gray. Uh, 50 50 and you don't even have to stir it up even it might actually be better if you don't stir it up then we'll get a new sponge and we'll go over the edges of the inside of the windows Maybe we'll go heavier on the bottom ones. That is really a good match for the wood color. So I'm going to do the edge of the corners. Very lightly. I'm not doing much at all. While we've got um, some paint still left on our palette, we'll do a little bit of chipping on these doors. I feel like this is a really good size kit to really go in and do some extra detail and really take your time on the model uh, because it's not that big. There's really not a lot to do. Um, so. Uh, this is a good chance to really sort of hone your skills. Like now, I'm kind of dry brushing. Dragging my brush over the edge. Over those corners. I think on a larger kit... Um, you don't take as much time because uh, there's so much to do and you're maybe kind of in a hurry to get it done. Um, this is a good kit to really practice some techniques on. Okay, I actually did quite a bit of dry brushing over the clapboard, uh, over the entire model. It really just ties it all together. And you know, before we get any windows glued in or doors, let me take the camera off and give you a close-up look of where we're at so far. Okay, next we need to put in all of our doors and windows. We're going to try something a little different on this one. We're going to take our window that's already painted. Just dabbing a little bit of glue, not much. And... Let's 
so you can see I'm just gluing the windows laying it down on the plastic then we'll cut the plastic slightly bigger than the window that way when we put it in there um, it won't fall through I've never done this before and it's actually a pretty good way to do the windows I mean if you wanted to you could cut them exactly to the edge of the window frame and, and pop them in so um, this is a little bit easier than trying to cut the plastic first to the exact size of the window and then glue it on now it doesn't take much glue at all I may do all of my windows like this from now on <laughs> it's great trying new techniques don't get stuck in doing stuff the same all the time don't be afraid to try something new okay all of the doors and windows are glued in And I simply took desert sand and painted the back of the windows for window shades. Okay, on the roof cards, I wanted to point out that one, these two look very similar, but one is actually thinner. The thin one goes on the front uh, for like an awning. So we'll set that one aside. Okay, next we need to paint the underside that's the overhang, the uh, thicket color. Okay, I'm gluing the roof cards on. There's one that goes right here and it has a notch out of the corner and that goes right there there's one piece that I forgot it's not really necessary but to give that roof some support and let's see if we can actually take it off so we have this wall right here we can slide that down okay just a very snug fit but you can slide that wall down And it gives that roof something to rest on and we'll just quick put some glue on it like that and then we'll put this on okay so I cut the the window in the window frame out and painted that and got that put in the front then below those there's a long rectangle paint one side of it the uh, bluish color thicket and then paint the ends and one edge in the front now we'll turn that upside down
and we're going to take these we have two of them and then we have our roof card and we painted the underside of it so we flip that over and that will get glued on the top of it but first we need to glue this to the front and we want to line it up so that the top of the roof matches this side over here We'll just hold it there for a, a second. Let that glue set up. Now let's set this aside. And we'll take this. And we'll cut all the pieces out. Now with this piece, we're going to glue these onto the back, making sure to line up the top. And there's three of these, so you'll put one in the center and one on each end. I'll show you after I get it glued on. Again, make sure that the uh, point at the top lines up with the top of this. Okay, now we'll get a gray primer sprayed on this and we'll get a gray primer sprayed on the letters. You know what, let's go ahead and cut all of the letters out and get them glued on and then we'll just spray a gray primer over the entire thing. Now, this is going to be a lot easier than what you think because I've spaced these um, to allow, it shows you exactly where the letters need to go. So the first one is the word Smiths. And we're just gonna put a little bit of glue on the first two, uh, the first two I don't know what you want to call them. <laughs> and now notice that middle pole does not go in the middle of the T. I put it over to the side. Now, I'm going to cut this out and glue it in the center. Okay, now these letters go in between these two bars right here. And uh, I'll quick show you. I'll glue the L and the K. And then just brush off the extra glue. You can see they go all the way to the edge. Okay, let's, okay, let's start, start with the E, the e and glue and that, that in this. Center. 
brush off the extra glue. Now we'll glue on the letter K. Okay, we'll spray a gray primer after this dries and then we'll have to paint our letters um, white and then we'll get that glued on the rooftop right there. Okay, our gray primer is on here. Now we'll set this aside and let's get our tar paper on the roof. Now let's take some sandpaper. Uh, this is 150 grit. And we're just going to rough up the tar paper a little bit. And then we'll do some dry brushing. Okay, now we'll do some dry brushing. We'll start with slate gray. Okay, we'll do a little bit of weathering. Okay, let's take our sign and we're going to use light buttermilk. It'll probably end up taking two coats. Just take your time. Okay, I sponged on some dark brown. Now we'll just take some super glue and glue it to the roof. Okay, now we have to cut out the signs and get them all glued on. Uh, let's start with the window signs first. Okay, the signs are on. Let me quick show you all of them. We have one no parking sign on the driveway. A sign up above, window signs, another window sign. and two signs on the side. Okay, all that's left is the base, uh, a sidewalk in front, and a driveway. So let's, let's do that. Here's what it looks like in the kit. You just simply have to cut it out. So the structure sits on here, and our driveway gets put there, and our sidewalk gets put there. We're going to paint this with some chalk paint, Cocoon. Now, I've received so many messages 
from people who can't find this and it's either not available in their area or uh, I, I don't know the reason but they're unable to find cocoon so very quick we're going to take desert sand and slate gray any light gray and any tan color and we're just going to mix these together i'll open this so that you can see how easy it is now i do like to use chalk paint because it's so dull but i understand if it's not in your area Now it doesn't take much gray at all. And I don't know if you can see, but it's pretty darn close. <laughs> So don't worry if you can't find Cocoon. It's easy to mix it. And now we want to make sure that we get the edges good. So I did some quick weathering on there. And now We'll glue this on there. Okay. Now, we need to get all of the details painted and glued on it. Okay, the model is finished. Kit comes with a couple gooseneck lamps, uh, the wood crates, trash cans, and a barrel. And it comes with a little vent here, uh, a smokestack here. And another smokestack right there. Let me take the camera off and I'll give you a closer look. and put it in its new home. Okay, well, there it is in its new home. You know, this is a great medium-sized kit. I'd mentioned in the video, 
that it's great to spend some time on a kit this size learning some new techniques, um, honing your skills. Um, it's the perfect size. And as you can see, this kit has a lot of character to it. All right, well, that's all we have time for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, the kit can be purchased on my website at jasonjensentrains.com. All right, well, until next time, stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.